Before we start this video, I want to let you guys know that this video is also being sponsored by Setapp. Setapp is an all-in-one suite for your Mac. You can use this on any Mac that you have, MacBook, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, iMac, doesn't matter. You have access to all different kinds of apps that range from lifestyle, creativity, developer tools. You can even get things like Clean My Mac X, which is an amazing, amazing application that I use on a daily basis. The better touch tool to improve your touch bar. You can get Clean Shut X, which I use all the time when it comes to taking better screen shots or video recordings. The list goes on and on. So if you want to check this out and give it a shot, I definitely recommend it. It gives you everything you need straight out the box within the app. If you need, you know, whatever application for your Mac, set app has it. So check the link in the description. If you guys want to check this out, I'm telling you, this is probably going to be something that you genuinely want to have on your Mac. I've benefited from it a lot and they just keep coming out with more apps. So keep an eye out for that. And let's get into the video. What's going on guys. My name is Justin Chow. I am a self-taught web developer. For those of you who are just joining in on the channel now, I've been doing this for about a year now. And on this channel, I will be documenting my journey, going over some tips, tricks, and just again, documenting the journey that I go on as a self-taught dev. I want to make this journey as transparent for you guys as possible in order for you to kind of have someone to look at and follow in on, learn from my mistakes and potentially take away something of value when you guys are headed onto your own personal journeys and that's what this channel is all about. That being said, let's go into my setup. And first things first, obviously, like I said at the beginning of the video, my personal IDE of choice is going to be VS Code. So let's go ahead and open up VS Code right now. Yes, I've used Sublime. Yes, I've tried out Atom. No, I will never use Vim. And when I say never, I probably end up will end up using Vim. But VS Code just kind of is my personal choice when it comes to an IDE. I learned how to use it first when I was coming up. You know, all the courses that I took, a lot of the people on YouTube that I watched when it came to learning how to code, they all used VS Code and I was just like, okay, I guess this is gonna be it. And so far up until this point, it's been the only thing I used and I genuinely love it. It's been awesome and they keep improving on it. So for those of you out there who are looking for an IDE and can't make the choice, I highly recommend VS Code. Before we get into all of the extensions slash plugins, let me go over the theme and the font because that's probably what's asked a lot more than anything else when it comes to the setup. And that's primarily what you're gonna see here. So as you can see, it's gonna look very different from what the base theme is out the box with VS Code. The theme I'm running right now and have been running with for about like six months now and probably don't plan on switching anytime soon is going to be Morgan.Code's theme that she created and put on the marketplace. Ever since she put it up there, I was always looking at it. I was like, oh, do I want to use that? I saw other people use it. And then once I started using it, it actually just like kind of stuck and I never left it. I just love the way it looks. The color scheme is great. It's got this like Miami vibe to it, which I kind of like with the dark pink and the and the light blue so i it really struck me it's, it's dark in the background, so it's nice and easy on the eyes. Great for long coding sessions. So if you are ever interested in looking at the theme, the link will be down in the description for you to check out this theme and install it for yourself. Anything that I will mention in this, aside from the extensions, I will put the links down in the description. The extensions, you'll just have to look up in the marketplace, which is also built into VS Code, which makes it very, very handy and very, very easy to install. Next thing that we're going to head into is going to be the font. My font of choice which is probably one of the most debatable and controversial parts of my setup is Victor Mono. Victor Mono is going to be the font that I roll with. And as you can see, you know, it's very simple, but there is also some, you know, cursive in that where on certain styling. So for example, if you look right here in the CSS that's built into my, let's, for example, the footer right here, there is some cursive in it. And for me personally, I love that styling and I think it looks great. It very much just like kind of fits what I like in aesthetic. I gravitated more towards the Victor Mono font, but with some of the other people that I've talked to, some of the devs that have seen my setup, they say otherwise, they don't really like the cursive. And they say it makes it hard to read, but honestly, it kind of adds some, it adds something to my setup. It's something fun, you know, it's not like I geek over it, but it's just 
just, you know, it makes it different. You know, every time I see the media queries, the styling, the imports, it just kind of adds this, this little vibe to my setup. I don't know how else to explain it, but I, I thoroughly enjoy it. Victor Mono supports ligatures. So if you guys don't know what ligatures is, it's going to be these like icons right here that get combined. So for example, on the arrow function, which I can just explain to you right now. So if I do an equal sign and then the less than sign here, you will see that it turns into an actual arrow. So it combines these two symbols and kind of creates a nice looking icon for me. Same thing goes for if I were to do the equals, it does another equal sign. If I do the not, it will show me that it's not equals, but it does like a nice cross. So that's also the cool thing about Victor Mono is that it supports ligatures. And with the combination of Morgan's theme, it actually looks really, really nice, easy to read. So best of both worlds there. That's gonna be my setup as far as the visual aspect of things. All right, now let's get into the long list here. We're gonna kind of run through things and show you what exact extensions I use on a day-to-day -day basis and what I have installed on my VS code setup. So let's head over to our extensions list and let me expand this so that we can kind of go over everything that I'm using. I'm not gonna go over everything cause there are just some things that aren't worth going over. I will go over some of the ones that I actually genuinely use on a day-to-day -day basis and utilize. As for the other ones, some of them I might have just installed and not uninstalled where, you know, they were there, they might've been there for a small project and then I never used it again. So I will only cover the actual ones that are in use pretty much every day that I use VS Code. The first and big one that I use is going to be auto close tag. This one is probably the most beneficial and helpful for me when it comes to opening and closing tags automatically which I mean, it comes in the title. Anytime that I'm working with JSX or HTML where there is an open and closing tag, this will automatically code the closing tag for me so that, you know, it's just one less thing I have to type, which speeds up development for sure. Again, it, it's primarily there to speed up development. You know, having to type in the closing tag is kind of cumbersome. So, you know, that being there makes things so much nicer and faster for sure. To add on to that, and it's from the same developer, it's going to be auto rename tag. So same applies when I'm working with JSX, when I'm working with HTML, this extension right here will automatically rename a element to whatever it is I'm renaming it to. So let's just say I started with a div in React and I wanted to rename it to something else. Let's just say in this example, this div right here, and I will have to delete it later. This div right here aligns down with this div and I wanted to, uh, change it to the link container. So I can go in and change it to link container. And at the bottom here, you'll notice it changed the link container. Again, just speeds up development. It's one less thing, especially if the JSX or the HTML is pretty extensive and there's a lot of children within a container. I don't have to scroll down all the way and change that last tag. It'll just automatically do it for me, which is a nice to have if you are working a lot with HTML or you know a framework that has to do with JSX like React. Next extension that I use pretty extensively, and this just kind of sits in the background more often than not is Babel, Babel, Babel. Comment below which way you pronounce it. One for Babel and two for Babel. I'm curious to see what you guys and how you guys pronounce that. But this is for JavaScript purposes. And obviously I primarily work in JavaScript when it comes to programming. This extension highlights the syntax for me when it comes to JavaScript. So, you know, when you work a lot with ES6, it can get pretty extensive. So having it, you know, highlight the arrow functions or just, you know, color code things in a certain way where it's very readable, where like, you know, if there's multiple brackets, it'll color code those brackets individually and pair them together, which is going to be actually the next extension that works in tandem with that is actually bracket pair colorizer. So along with the JavaScript syntax highlighting where it's easy for me to like literally go over and read some of the code that I've made, bracket pair colorizer goes in and individually highlights some of the brackets to pair them up so that I know what belongs to what scope or what block essentially. So in the styles, it's pretty easy to read, but it's nice to see that, you know, there's this outside bracket that's color coded in light blue and then the inside brackets are color coded light yellow or just yellow in general. Same goes for here, right? You can see that the 
most outer bracket is in yellow, so I can trace it all the way back here, but everything inside is going to be, you know, related to its closest bracket. So these two yellow brackets are closest to each other. So those are a pair and it's easy to read with the arrays as well. So I know that that is, you know, paired with this. Again, it just makes things easier to read and easier to maintain when file structures or code bases get a little bit longer than when it's initially started. The next extension that becomes very, very useful when you're dealing with a, with a lot of CSS is going to be color highlight. So again, when you're dealing with a lot of CSS and let's just say you're making variables, right? In CSS, you're typically using hex codes to do them. And by default, VS Code does have this nice little square box that shows you what color it is, but sometimes it's kind of hard to read. With color highlight, it actually highlights the whole hex code with the color it is that you're using. So in this example, on this website, I used a Gatsby starter and in the Gatsby config, by default, the background color and the theme color have this hex code of 663399. And with the extension, it actually highlights that whole thing so I know exactly what that kind of purple looks like or whatever color I'm using, that's what's gonna pop up. So that's always nice to have, especially when you're dealing with a lot of color and you're trying to figure out what colors look well and good together. You can do that within the IDE, just put two hex codes together, you see what colors come out a lot clearer than what the default will show you. And again, it just makes development so much easier for sure. This next extension is going to be one of the ones that I actually enjoy using the most. I still need to learn some of the snippets that are built into this extension and utilize it a little bit more to speed up my development process within React specifically. But this is the ES7 React Redux GraphQL. I believe it supports React Native and just JavaScript snippets in general. This extension right here allows me to again speed up development with these small commands or snippets where I can go into a empty file and just do something, put in a small snippet and it'll output some uh, a piece of code that that snippet is then tied to. So if we scroll down here, you can kind of see some of the things that I'm talking about. So these basic methods, right? If I type in IMP into a file, it'll automatically put an import module name from module. That way I don't have to type in this whole import statement. I can literally just type in IMP, hit enter, and then it'll put it in for me. And all I have to do is tell it what module, what the name of the module it is I'm trying to import and where it's coming from. Okay. So that's one example. Another great one that I love using a lot is going to be these, these react prefixes, right? So for example, if I am creating a new component and I want to start like, you know, importing react and things like that, you know, the kind of the default functional component, I can type in RAFC and by default, it will fill in import react from react with the exporting of the component the dollar sign one is just going to put your cursor there automatically so that you can rename the component to whatever it is it, uh, the component's going to be. With RAFCE, it does the same thing, but now it turns it into an arrow function where the export default is now at the bottom and the dollar sign one and one are now both at the beginning of the function at the end of the file where we export it. So all I have to do there is literally rename the component to whatever the function is or you know vice versa and then you know start working on the component. This extension right here is just there primarily to speed up my process. I only use a couple snippets. RAFCE is definitely one of those snippets and I use it almost all the time I'm working in React. ESLint is going to be the next extension. So this is a pretty typical and standard extension that most developers, if not all developers, should be using and just have enabled on their IDEs, especially when it comes to VS Code. This is just a simple linter for your code so that it's just double checking the code to make sure that you're following some of the standards, some of the rules, and just to kind of ensure that your code is written well and not containing any bugs or helps you avoid some of those bugs later in the future or just down the line. Another cool one that I actually just installed recently is going to be import cost. This extension right here kind of shows me how big some of these packages or modules it is that I'm importing. So for example, up here for import react, you can see that 8.4 K was zipped out. That's just the, the size of the module. So it's kind of cool to see, especially, you know, if there's something really, really big, for example, the SVGs from font awesome that I'm using, 
that's a little big, so I know that that might be taking a little bit more time when it comes to, you know, compiling something or loading in images in this case, then I know what it is is causing an issue. So that's just kind of a cool thing to have, cool thing to see up at the very top and helps especially when it comes to file sizes and managing that. Next one is going to be Live Server. This one is a pretty well-known extension, especially when you're first starting out and just starting with HTML and CSS. Out the box, there's not really a way for you to get into the HTML file that you're working on without you know refreshing it constantly and opening it up through a file explorer or through finder so live server is a great extension to where if you have an index file and I want to view it live and get you know features like hot reload where I can just hit save in VS code and then see the changes once I go back over to Chrome Safari whatever browser I'm working on and see the changes there without having to refresh everything live server achieves that for me it opens up an open port or an open server for me to work in and just kind of does what it is it's a live server pretty simple extension but I think it's a must-have especially if you're working primarily in HTML and CSS this one is also so 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 useful in the fact that again it achieves the purpose of speeding up development and just making things ten times easier but this time it's not with snippets this is called path IntelliSense and what path IntelliSense does is it reads through the file file system and auto completes file names for you. Once you start to type in kind of where that location is, it'll kind of auto complete for you. And that way you're not typing out a whole file name directory or path. You can just start typing in something and it'll say, oh, I think I know what you're trying to get and where you or what you need and where it is. Is this what you're looking for? And bam, it'll auto fill it there. All you have to hit is enter and your file is now imported. That helps so much, especially like in React when you're trying to get, let's say a picture or an SV VG in and that file is like two folders out in from where your directory is or it's in the root you don't have to type out all that line of you know directories you can just kind of go through it and it'll autocomplete these these root folders for you and then that way you can kind of get to your intended file a lot quicker path intellisense is probably one of the must haves when it comes to extensions in vs code the next extension is prettier prettier is pretty standard as well for people to have on their IDEs, specifically VS Code. Prettier is just a code formatter. You can use it on file save. So I have it so that where when I hit save, Prettier will automatically run on the code that I saved, check it and format it in a way that one is more readable, two, it also does things like check for quotations. If you are using double quotes, it might change it to single quotes, omit or add semicolons where you might need them and miss them and things like that. It just kind of helps with readability it helps with formatting so that it's again readable for other developers or yourself if you're just not writing clean code and helps with spotting bugs fixing bugs and preventing some of them in the future kind of like ESLint both of them work in tandem in that sense where when it comes to formatting and cleaning up code <laughs> All right, future Jay here. I have to jump in because there was some technical difficulties that were going on with the video. Unfortunately, I went over the 20 minute mark when it came to recording and my camera kind of just stopped recording the video and all I have is the rest of the screen cap. Thankfully, the rest of the video isn't too long, so the outro will also be in the future. Please enjoy the rest of the video and yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. We return you now to your regularly scheduled program. Project Manager, which does require a reload right now because I'm assuming that there was an update, but this one is a very, very helpful extension in that I am able to now save some of the projects that I work on more so than others. So let's say that there are client sites that I tend to work on more so and more often than other projects. I can go into Project Manager and it actually has its own tab right over here and I can actually save some of the folders that I tend to work on more and that way I don't have to go into my terminal or I don't have to go into finder and manually find what project I'm looking for and then open it that way. I can just open VS code, look at some of the folders that I have saved and then just click on it and it'll open up those projects for me. So if I wanted to open up my MBA stats app, I can do that. It'll open up a separate window and bam, my project is now open and I can get to work on this project very quickly. Don't need to go through the terminal or anything like that. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you guys have any other questions regarding my VS code setup or any of the extensions slash plugins that I use, 
go ahead and hit me down in the comments and I would be more than happy to answer your questions for you. If you also want to join the Discord that I actually just started, the link will be down in the description. The Devs Den is what it's called. So if you guys wanna join an awesome little community right now of other fellow developers and we're full of self-taught people, people who are already, you know, have a full-time job in the industry. There's just so many people in there. So get in there, go and connect. You can connect with me a little bit easier than it would be if you want to DM me or something like that. But like I said, that'll do it for today. I will see you guys on the next one. Peace out.